If you've been feeling overwhelmed with anxiety lately, try listening to a guided meditation on the Meditation for Anxiety podcast. Meditation is a proven natural way to help you calm down and dissolve stress so you can feel lighter and happier. So subscribe for free today to the Meditation for Anxiety podcast by searching for Meditation for Anxiety on your favorite podcast player. This is Optimal Living Daily, episode 2734, You Are Always Living Your Values, by Eric Teplitz of ericteplitz.com, and I'm Justin Mollick, your very own personal narrator. Hello, old friend, not me calling you old. Old stands for Optimal Living Daily. This is where I read articles to you the best I can find and get permission from so that you can have a little dose of positivity, inspiration, motivation, or happiness each and every day. So with that, let's get right to another post and start optimizing your life. You are always living your values by Eric Teplitz of ericteplitz.com. A couple of years ago, I attended a workshop during which we participants were asked to choose from a list literally hundreds long, our top 10 values. After doing this, we were then asked to prioritize our final answers. I was frustrated and overwhelmed by this exercise, feeling like there was no way I could possibly do it in the allotted time we were given. I also wondered afterwards, even if I worked on this long enough to get to a point where I was relatively satisfied with my answers, how accurate would they really be? How would I be able to make the distinction, in other words, between my purported values and my actual values? I may claim to love one thing more than another, say courage far above security or comfort, But what if my day-to-day behavior viewed unflinchingly reflected otherwise? I came to the conclusion that we are always living our values, our actual ones, whether or not we like them, are willing to accept the truth of them, or are even fully aware of them. For instance, if we claim to value our connection with others above all else, but we spend five times as many hours watching TV alone as we do hanging out with friends, there may be a disconnect there. Maybe in such an example, we actually value being entertained and or distracted above building meaningful relationships. It would seem to me that a rigorous, objective assessment of how we actually spend our time, energy, and dollars, were such a report readily obtainable, would give us a more accurate depiction of our values than simply creating a list of what we believe them to be. Really taking in what our actual values are, I imagine, would be disillusioning for all of us to one degree or another. We might find an impartial report to them to be anywhere from mildly disappointing to deeply unsettling. On the other hand, we might be pleased to learn that we have been more successful in some arenas than we may have been able to acknowledge or give ourselves credit for. But the indisputable truth of what we value, whatever those things are and in whatever order of importance, would be right there in front of our eyes. Values versus ideals. What we would like our values to be were we to compile a prioritized list are actually our ideals. And so, though it may sound like mere semantics, I'm suggesting here that there is a difference. Our values are simply a reflection of what our choices indicate is really important to us at any given point in time. As Steve Pavlina, the workshop facilitator, reminded us, We can elect to change our values at any time, and we often do. Our ideals, on the other hand, are those values to which we aspire. If we would like to be more generous, more courageous, more connected to others, more adventurous, more open-minded, more trusting, more creative, or more anything than we currently are, then these amount to our ideals. The good news is we can make new choices to consciously bridge the gap between our values and our ideals until the latter become more integrated into the former. While I do believe that most of us are always living our values, I also believe that none of us are always living fully in accordance with our ideals. Since our ideals are, by my distinction anyhow, aspirational in nature, this means they are things toward which we are striving. It is possible, though, that we can be living in full accordance with yesterday's ideals, which may have successfully merged into today's values. Like our values, our ideals are subject to change or modification at any time. 
This means that we never arrive as fully integrated, completely and perfectly actualized beings with no room for growth. Thank goodness for that. Rather, the human journey, as I see it, is a constantly changing experience during which we have the opportunity to grow in any number of different ways. And the best that any of us can do is work towards living with greater and greater integrity, that is, closer and closer to our ideals, given the current state of affairs with our health, energy, knowledge, awareness, understanding, resources, access to resources, environment, etc. After we are gone. After we are gone, others will remember us not for our purported values, our ideals, but for the actual values we exemplified in all of the big and little decisions we made and the ways in which we lived our lives, consciously chosen or not. So, given that you can't help but live them, what are your values, at least at this moment in time? You just listened to the post titled, You Are Always Living Your Values, by Eric Teplitz of ericteplitz.com. So you open Google Chrome on your phone, you're hunting for a super rare first edition vinyl of a band you're obsessed with when you're supposed to be working. But this site you tapped on seems pretty shady. And Daryl from IT just jumped up from his desk. Oh no, he's coming your way. It's a good thing built-in malware protection keeps you safe and sound. Not from Daryl though, sorry. There's no place like Chrome. Download Google Chrome on your phone. We've all heard about the benefits of meditation and deep breathing, but sometimes we feel we need more to solve our underlying causes of anxiety, depression, or anger. Introducing my new favorite mental health app, NeuroCycle, a clinically tested app whose mind management system has been over 30 years in the making. It's a simple audio and video guided program you do over 63 days to identify the root cause of whatever is causing you pain and rewire this pain as healthy new neural networks into your brain. I've been using NeuroCycle for a few weeks now, and I'm already feeling a lot more clarity on where some of my own struggles originate. I'm learning a lot about myself, and it's amazing to think that there's still another month plus before my 63 days is up. I can tell there's still a lot of growth to come. And for a limited time, get 50% off your first month subscription with code OLD. Go to neurocycle.app, that's N-E-U-R-O-C-Y-C-L-E dot app, and use promo code OLD so they know we sent you. Thank you to Eric. He has a podcast too, by the way, called The Person You Want to Be, so you can check that out for more from him. It's a bit of a cold, hard truth, I think, and he's right, what we say our values are might not match our actions, like what we actually do. Like he said, what we think are our values might actually just be our ideals, not our actual values that we currently live by. And I don't think this is the purpose of his article, but something I like to do every once in a while, in fact, I'm gonna be starting this back up pretty soon, is tracking my time, exactly what I'm doing with my time, every hour, every day, for a good month or so, maybe more. I don't think it's necessary to do it for too long, but really just to see how much time goes into work and exactly what I'm doing at work, and if some of that is unnecessary or taking way longer than it should, but then also healthy habits, sleep, you name it. With that, I can really see if my ideals are matching my values, at least the values that I'm currently living by. These types of tracking activities from tracking your time to your mood, your money, your exercise, there's almost always something to take away from it. So I always recommend trying it at least once. And this was a good reminder of what it might elucidate. So big thanks again to Eric, Thank you very much for being here, wishing you a happy rest of your day, and I'll see you tomorrow where your optimal life awaits.